And for the very latest on this, our correspondent Alex Kadia is joining us live from Brussels. And Alex, thanks very much for talking to us. Uh, so Ukraine clearly dominating the uh, issues at the NATO summit. Uh, but as Zelensky pointed out, he was disappointed that there was not a clear messaging on its membership and its future in the NATO. Yeah, you're absolutely right, President Zelensky calling it absurd that there will not be a clear sign of Ukraine's invitation uh, to the NATO alliance. Very strong language from the Ukrainian presence in response to what we know are, are leaks of possible language in this final communique. This is the uh, statement that all NATO leaders issue at the end of the summit, like we've, the one that's going on in Lithuania at the moment. Now, the one line that we've heard uh, leaked from is the NATO position will be we will be in a position to extend an invitation to Ukraine when allies agree the conditions are met. And that is the language that President Zelensky has certainly taken exception to. Uh, certainly uh, frustration. He's been clear from the beginning that that NATO membership is important. And he also decried the adding of those conditions are met. And we don't know exactly what those conditions are. We know uh, at least that the end of the war will be one of those conditions. Uh, Ukraine cannot join and cannot be invited to join so long as it is in an active conflict, certainly in the face of Russia's invasion. But really strong language from uh, the Ukrainian president. Part of his motivation, perhaps, as he has said several times, is that that NATO membership as an objective, as well as EU membership, uh, NATO membership is something that really motivates those Ukrainian troops to keep fighting, to try to push back the Russian invasion of their country so that they can have a safer future within the NATO alliance. So President Zelensky, who is expected in Vilnius in the next couple of days, very frustrated with that uh, statement, or at least draft statement from those NATO leaders so far. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And Alex, of course, it seems like there has been a rethink from countries like the U.S. and other uh, top nations about Ukraine's membership. Uh, uh, what is driving that even as, you know, country after country is announcing um, defense deals and acquisitions to Ukraine? Uh, you know, France being the latest saying that they will provide long range missiles uh, to Ukraine as well. Uh, is this, uh, you know, a step back uh, as, as they worry about you know, acting as a block against Russia and, and the consequences of that. Well, I wouldn't say that it's a step back, but it's certainly not yet a step forward. And that will be the frustration from President Zelensky. We know that U.S. President Joe Biden uh, broadly agrees with that language that I just mentioned. He uh, said that in a, in a press conference or a statement with uh, Jens Stoltenberg, the Secretary General of NATO. So there is support from the United States, obviously a very influential member of the NATO alliance, probably the, it's certainly the biggest member and therefore the most influential. Germany also a little bit reluctant to offer promises. Uh, there's a variety of reasons why, obviously not wanting to exactly exacerbate things and further provoke Russia, but certainly hard to see how the relationship between the United States and Russia at the moment could get any worse, but also not having a clear picture of what exactly uh, that membership will look like and when it will happen. There have been debates about the process, for example, something called the Membership Action Plan, which any new country to join NATO uh, has to have, which is a roadmap, basically, of how they will join the alliance. That includes things like military alignment, so aligning uh, a new country's military technology and tactics with those uh, tactics and, and, and technology of the NATO alliance. Now, Ukraine certainly moving very quickly in that direction, as we know, uh, with increased numbers of military equipment from the NATO alliance, but also democratic reforms and societal reforms that the new Ukraine will have to go through. So there's a question as to whether or not that process is made easier for Ukraine. That isn't clear yet, but certainly the key players, uh, at least slowing down, not stopping, but slowing down the process uh, of that Ukrainian uh, membership would be the United States and Germany. And on the other hand, you have the Baltic states, like Lithuania, which is hosting this summit, who are fiercely supportive of that Ukrainian uh, uh, membership. We've seen the president of the Czech Republic, Peter Pavel, just a few days ago, very much pushing hard for that timeline to be given. There's a frustration, certainly, from those countries. But that is the nature of NATO. They are 31 members, and they have to come to a unanimous de decision altogether. And until they have it, they won't move forward on that Ukrainian membership. Much, uh, Alex, for joining us with the very latest. There are uh, quite clearly many different opinions within the NATO, and we'll have to wait to watch. Uh, see the final statement at the end of the summit to know more about what the wording is for Ukraine's membership. Thanks. Appreciate you joining us today.